Mark Gatman if you should've known. Might be difficult today to see beyond the sorrow. But may look at back and remember, I'm gonna fight you tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, we're at the video shoot. Posthumous. Clifford Clemens official. Mark Edmund, if you didn't know. Brando. What's up? Follow me on Steve. Show the shirt, show the shirt. Come on, come on. Brandon, Brandon, Brandon. Got to. I got to, I got you. What's up, yes, sir? We had an undisclosed location. Yeah, coming soon. Coming soon. What's up? Sure. It's basically, you know, it's afterlife. You know, I'm speaking in that in that uh, perspective. Like, I'm watching how things transpire. You know, I feel like that's a, that's a, uh, we all gotta go one day. You know what I'm saying? It's, so like, let me beat beat everybody to the punch. You know, people always say, I wonder what such and such would be thinking, or they be saying such and such going. They gonna want you to keep going. So, I'm saying everything. You know what I'm saying? It is deep like that. But you know, that's life. Yeah, man. It really hit yeah. me up. Yeah. We were trying to figure out what we were going to do for the video. It was brainstorming, you feel me? So I listened to the song, heard he was talking about the afterlife. So I'm like, might as well go to that cemetery. So, mm -hmm. And then this location I come to all the time and chill. So it's a nice dark area that matches the tone of the song. So, I'm, I'm bad with location, so I just do it all on here. Wow. Cemetery, but it was my idea to do a cemetery. I just got, kind of got in that vibe of, uh, actually, you know what? I kind of got into the vibe too, but I was doing an interview and then, uh, one of the guys, he kind of mentioned that to me. Uh, shout out to, to Meg from uh, Let the Vibe With Your Boys podcast. You know, I ain't want to forget the name. Yeah, he was like, yo, it'll be dope if you do this. I probably ain't take all his ideas, but I did want to kind of implement that. Kind of like, uh, you know, Tupac did in uh, Tupac. Tupac. Tupac, my favorite rapper right there. <laughs> but yeah, Tupac did that in the uh, I Ain't Mad At You uh, video. He kind of was talking in that term. He had the whole suit on. I ain't got the whole suit, but, you know, I kind of want to dress up a little bit. Yeah. Show, show. This, this clip of Flim is official, man. Talk to the camera, man. Yeah. Last years old from Brooklyn, New York. So, man, I met my boy, hit me up. My boy Jimmy DM me. He was yes, like, sir. yo, you need to collab with Mark. I was like, yeah, you know, let me know. 19 years old. What's up? Uh, Soul. Yeah, I do. I try to do everything. So I yeah, try to be yeah. versatile. I don't try to stay in one box. So, All right. So, you know, you know, it's a pleasure being out here, bro. You know, show, I show. always love interacting with different people, getting new experiences. So, you know. It's fun. Alright, so like, bro, it's always been a part of me. So. Alright. It's always been something that's helped me through the bad times and good times at the same time. So, you know, up, it's always a pleasure to do something I love. That's especially beautiful. with people that had the same passion as me. So, you know, right now. Sure. this shit bro. natural. It's feel like we've known each other for a minute. So, <laughs> oh, God. So, so, you know, we chilling. Looking like that. Mark, yeah, I get mean, if you didn't know. I was born in uh, Stoughton, Stoughton, Massachusetts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm, I'm raised in Broward. I came here like two, three, around that time. And then uh, from there, Sunrise, Florida. Been in Sunrise all my life. Yeah, I went to, uh, I actually went to Village Elementary. And then I had transferred to Horizon Elementary. And then I went to, uh, to Bear Middle School. And then I went to Piper High School. Yeah, growing up, growing, I'm the youngest of three. And I'm the youngest, I'm the youngest, we got uh, two big brothers. So yeah, I'm the, I'm the youngest, so that, that already uh, kind of uh, tell you what, like where I'm coming from as far as like being the youngest. I feel like when you're the youngest, like uh, you, 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 do, uh, you do get that sense of just being alone sometimes, you know, like we ain't no huge age gap or nothing like that, but you know, like, you know, a two year age gap could be different because you know, while they're in middle school, I'm in elementary school, so you know, you do kind of get accustomed to being like by yourself and things like that, which I think I kind of inherited. But it, it wasn't really like no real favoritism though, like that for real though. We we grew up really tight, me and my brothers, you know. So uh, we grew up in like a we ain't grew up like rough, you know what I'm saying? Like in the moment, it wasn't rough. You know, looking back at it, you could probably be like, damn, you know, shit was a little fucked up. But it wasn't like bad, like you know, we ain't grew up in like no no hood or nothing like that, you know. We had clothes and stuff like that, like you know, it wasn't like. It wasn't down bad, you get what I'm saying? I ain't finna paint no story like we just ain't had shit at all, you know what I mean? But it definitely uh, it wasn't a, I'm gonna say it wasn't, it wasn't like a, a ideal situation, you know, because, you know, parents got divorced, shit like that. And then uh, eventually uh, we ended up moving uh, with other family members, you know, like 
like man 13 people in one house at, at one point you know so you know me and my brother sharing a room and shit like that so you know it was probably one ideal but in the moment you don't really know no better you know so you know you just it is what it is you know uh in, in, in like elementary school probably i was like more so like a shy kid growing up a real shy like i'm talking about when it kind of like in presentations i kind of like start freezing up a little bit and you know, I see they calling people to read and shit like that. I'm like, damn, what they don't call me? You know, so I had to, uh, of course, you know, I, I eventually later on, I outgrew that. But yeah, it, I was like that for a little minute, though, like very shy, you know. Shy a little bit when it comes to certain situations, but for the most part, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much open to anything. You know, I, 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 won't, I won't say I was like the worst kid, you know, but I had my moments, you know, like in school, like, you know, definitely, uh, you get some calls to the house and things like that, you know. Not to say, like I said, I wasn't like no terrible kid, but you know, had some some incidents here and there, things like that. You know, I was I was on point though. Like early on in elementary school, I was really on point with like my grades and stuff like that. You know, eventually just started slipping, getting distracted, and things like that. So yeah, I wanted to play basketball. I had hoop dreams. I made the team uh, in middle school, and then uh. That, that year, that eighth grade year, uh, my cousin passed away, um, my cousin Dwight. He was like one of my biggest supporters. He used to always push me and, you know, he used to, he really believed in me, you know, as far as like taking it to the next level. And uh, after he passed, you know, uh, I really, I really don't know how, I, like, I ain't know how to handle that in a sense, you know, and before you know, I kind of lost that passion, that drive to continue to keep uh, playing ball, like, I, I easily could have made it uh, in, in high school. Uh, I went to the tryouts and everything. I was, I was about to make the team. I just stopped going to practice. I'm, I'm, I'm in the sports more so than the music at the time. You know, yeah, that was like my thing for real. Like I thought I was gonna be the, I thought I'd be the next uh, Michael Jordan or something like that. You know, yeah, for sure, for sure. Uh, and then, uh, you know, with, as time progressed, you know, of course, you know, you get older. You know, your interests start changing. You know, like, I, I felt like, a, I felt like, like, going into middle school, I felt like I kind of, I kind of, like, lost the directions for, like, what I really wanted to do. Because I ain't really, like, I ain't try out for the team my sixth grade year, you know. I was just on some other stuff, you know, just getting in trouble, like, in, 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 in school more so, not outside of school, you know. Like, I wasn't really, like, wouldn't ride the streets or nothing like that. That wasn't really me, but, like, in school, just, you know, it's not focused. I want to say probably like eighth grade year. Eighth grade year, I decided, you know what, this is gonna be the year. You know, I locked in. I made the basketball team. You know, like I said, back to my cousin Dwight. Like I like, he believed in, in in all of us. So, like, he always he always seen that for me. You know, I'm glad uh, I got a chance for him to see me make the team and things like that. I remember like it was a team poster. And I remember him writing MVP by my name, you know, that I like, that was dope, you know. Uh, so, and unfortunately, that, that year that I did make the team, uh, he passed away that same year. So that, that was a big, 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 big hit for me, you know. I ain't, I ain't really know how to deal with something like that, you know. I ain't never really lost uh, somebody like so young and so close at that moment. Of course, you know, you deal with losses, but when somebody so young and, and somebody who you look up to in a sense, like, wow, you know, like here today going to mall type situation, you know, definitely uh, impacted me. Like more, more so, more so now than uh, at, in, in the moment, in the moment, you don't, I, don't, I ain't know how to deal with it. You know, I just knew that it, it, it didn't feel right. You know, just, you know, the first time something like that happened and, uh, it definitely, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to say I lost all my motivation for basketball because uh, of that, you know, but I, I noticed, like, the drive wasn't there. You know, the, 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 the passion that I, that I once had started losing it, you know, and then uh, as I went to high school, I still had, you know, had my, my eyes set on it, but again, man, I just, I just wasn't on it, like, for real. Like, it wasn't, like, something that I was thinking about all the time, like, I mean, I feel like if you ain't thinking about something, like you ain't passionate about it, you're wasting your time, you know? So I'm, I was going to all the practices, you know, down there. I think Final Cups was coming up and I just stopped going. Yeah, I just I stopped going and uh, <laughs> I used to try to avoid the coach. 
I knew you were gonna be on me about it, but yeah, and then before you know it, it is what it is. Like, I just stopped playing basketball. Like, I, I kind of, I gave it up in a sense, or, you know, I probably, I gave it up or maybe outgrew it, Who, you know, who's to say? To this day, I'm a, I'm a Knicks fan, uh, NBA, and I'm a Packers fan, just because of my cousin, that was who he was rooting for. So I just kind of stuck with it, you know, and I, I, I'm loyal, I'm loyal like that, for sure. I was making music, I started in like 2018. I was pretty good at it, but I ain't like the lack of support I was getting, so. Since like 2014, I've been doing like graphic design and stuff. So I decided to start doing cover arts for artists. I felt like I love music. So anything I do, I wanted to be involved in music. So I've, I've been an artist. It ain't work out too well. I, just, I started doing graphic designing. So instead of me doing, being an artist, I'm a supplier artist. It still mm -hmm. has to do with music. So then I started doing it's different. It's different. video effects. Things you can do is what you love. Right? I'm just Music is always gonna be a problem. And because you ain't get the initial response, don't you should have never stopped. You should have continued. Because I, I promise you, I used to get happy off of twenty five likes. So I used to get happy off of twenty five likes. And that's something. Five comments. If you coming from nothing, that's, that's something. something. I remember. I probably get so. Yeah, I, I used to. Nigga, I, used to be in, I used to be in my, my room like we finna get rich. You can't get discouraged. A lot of people want. They want the. They want the hundred thousand on the on one picture. Don't believe in yourself. All that, bro. They want the hundred thousand on one. Nobody gonna believe you. I feel you. I did one reel one time. I did a I did a reel my first reel I got like 20 views, I did a reel with someone that I knew, I think it jumped up to 4.2, probably 4.5 k, and like a minute or two I'm like bro that's what I'm telling you bro. yeah like you, gotta, bro, you, gotta, you just gotta keep going though don't get I'm caught up bro. in it too cause you know how that shit just go up and down as long as you the passion there bro just keep no matter it's just one cause you know you get happy over three thousand if you get the you might stop feeling like you ain't doing what you're supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. So it's all about just keeping it going. It's, you know, easy, to, it's easy to get discouraged. With it. Yeah, it's going to work itself out. Now, I I did, I, you, do your technically, part. you can use that as a motivation too. Exactly. You know, I got to go harder. Whatever yeah. I did previously, I got to do it again. But you put your better. best foot forward, I, I, I think. As like, long as you know your, your best foot forward, you, you, there's another chance next time. I, okay, they ain't, they won't fucking with this. Okay, the next one. That's the what next you got to realize too. Once you, when you make making music, bro, you got to realize that you make your music for you. Yeah. You, know, you gotta realize that. Even if they might not like it, it's your. It's yeah. Your it might not be for them, it, too. I'm making it for me. Yeah, they might like piece. you. They might exactly. like your other song, but not this particular exactly. song. So you can't but feel you like. You gotta realize the person that might not like this one, the other person. Yeah. They might say. Yeah. yeah. So you can't like get too caught up that go in it. Different situations that can connect with different songs. Some people yeah. might not like some of my songs, but the songs that they like, they connect to me. But another person down the street might like this one. One hundred percent. But you definitely got to recognize yeah. your progress and exactly, know that you bro. okay. I'm, I'm on a. It's, it's yeah. a sense of reassurance in a sense. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Just so okay. some things you got to yeah. pay attention to. Huh? Yeah. Just don't get I caught mean. up in it. That's how I feel. As long as you see a steady improvement. Yeah. That's going to be. Day. Yeah. Yeah. It could be something small, like like you said, twenty five likes compared to zero. It could and be something like that. Day. One follower a day, or you know, yeah, like or, or somebody in in, in that's the letter. Yeah, so I, I want to say it was probably like around like ninth, ninth, tenth grade year. That's when I started like really like writing more things like that. I'm not sure the exact moment like that made me just be like it just I don't know I can't even describe it to be honest with you like what, what moment possessed me to just start writing more because I always like entertained it you know like I, I probably wrote my first rhyme like when I was probably like eight years old or something like that but then again like I said music always been like a, a part of me like always I, I love music like sleep with music you know like I can't I can't live without music for real so I guess that was probably like a natural thing that happened to turn to the music, and then uh, I ended up uh, 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 linking up with uh, Chevy Boy and Woody. You know, uh, those two, those two are definitely uh, played a big part in my early on. Like they definitely uh, took me in and uh, gave me a platform. Like they had a studio, allowed me to go there to record. You know, just uh, perfect my craft, 
and uh, and stay out of trouble too. Like yeah. during that time, like I was I was getting in some incidents, you know, like just just more, more so like I said, like it'd be like school incidents, you know, like. But uh, at the same token, it's 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 still like like it's a, it's a, it's affecting the household. You know what I'm saying? You know, like parents ain't really like feeling they don't know what direction I'm going in and things like that. So once I was able to link up with uh, with, with Chevy and Woody, I was kind of able to just like after school go over there and hang with them. And you know, even though they was a little bit older, but it's it, it still was like they, they was kind of still like keeping me away from things and you know just put you know even just learning from them too just seeing the way they move and the things like that like they probably didn't know that but I was I was watching too so I, like I, I feel like uh like as far as like my peers in school like after school I ain't really like hang out with my my my, my peer you know like I feel like I was kind of was on a different path already you know so so like now so, some people think I'm older than I probably am like cuz I I I I've been around it you know I was like I, I, I kind of like, I feel like I, I avoided a lot of pitfalls that my peers uh, fell into, you know, because I, I kind of like knew what I wanted in a sense, like, I kind of knew, okay, I want I like this music stuff, you know, uh, I feel like this could be a way out, even though at the time, of course, like, I ain't really like making no moves, I don't really know the next step and things of that nature, but, you know, like, it, I, I felt good, good about it, you know, and, uh, Shout out to DJ One Atomic too. Uh, he he actually uh, put me on his uh, on my first mixtape, you know. So that was that was like that was big. Atomic um, during that time, he was like one of the biggest uh, DJs in Broward County. So you know, like I was listening to I was listening to him before I met him. So you know, once I got that stamp of approval, that was pretty good too. You know, you know Chevy and Woody, they been doing their thing too. I, before I even knew them like that, I've like been seeing them around the city too. So. And I felt like I was around the right people, you know, and uh, yeah, like it just it felt felt good. It felt like I was moving in the right direction. But, you know, of course, things wasn't really picking up for me, too, at the same token. Like, nothing was, like, I was not performing nowhere. I wasn't really, like, doing nothing, especially from the outside looking in. Like, you got your parents, you know, like, Especially uh, me, I, I'm, I grew up in a, a Haitian household, so, you know. Got my folks in mental bondage.